Phil Ross, Master RKC, will be presenting how to attract your optimal client mix and retain them year after year at this year's Health and Strength Conference. Phil, what is the biggest mistake you see most personal trainers make when they target potential clients? Well, one of the biggest mistakes they make is they go for the sexy. And what I mean by the sexy clients, you know, uh, they want to go for the, uh, for the athletes, they want to go for the, the celebrities and so forth. And you know what? You can waste a lot of cycles, you know, just trying to get in with that group of people. You want people to come to you as opposed to you really going to them. Building that referral base is, is a much better uh, spent time than it is, you know, chasing uh, after these highfalutin type clients. What is the biggest secret for keeping your clients loyal to you in the long term? You know, I have had some of my people with me for more than 25 years. That lasts more than most marriages. So <laughs> I think I got some, I think I have some people that are pretty loyal to me. Um, you know, one, one of the major things is that, you know, you, you pay attention to them. Pay attention. Pay attention to their development. Pay attention where they need work. And, um, and listen to them. You, you want to listen to them. Listen to, you know, what, what troubles they're having. I'm not saying like on a psychological level, although sometimes we do get there. But, you know, if they're trouble with a specific technique or they're having trouble, you know, uh, you know, getting into a certain weight or whatever the case may be, listen to them. And, you know, it's, it's a relationship. You want to build that relationship. You know, you're, you plan on being with these people for a long time. So, again, as in any relationship, you have to pay attention and you have to listen. Now, in terms of observable, sustainable results for your clients, what would you say are your five favorite exercises that have most contributed to those results? That's a really tough question, considering I know and use anywhere from about 350 to 400 different movements um, to narrow it down to five. But, you know, yeah, but we can. The first one, I would say, is the swing. The swing is you know, the, the, the mother of all kettlebell exercises. I mean, there's so much with the swing. If you, if you ain't got a good swing, you ain't got anything. We really work on um, getting that swing down, and people have great results with it because everything will come from that swing, you know, as far as the ballistics go. You know, your queen, your high pulls, your snatches, anything along those lines is, is rooted in the, um, in the swing. And, you know, the swing can be used in, in many different ways. You can use it, uh, you know, dead start. You can use dual. You can do it for speed. You can do it for power. So uh, it's got a lot of versatility, and people really enjoy doing the swing a lot as well. The next one I would say would be the get-up. And I'll be the first to tell you that when I first started doing get-ups, I hated them. Um, and then uh, I, I saw how, how much I could improve with them, and I just embraced it. And I just love doing get-ups, and my people do get-ups all the time. You know, the cool thing is that you can really see – great results, not only just in the different weight that's being put up, but just their, their general conditioning, you know, their shoulder strength, their overall mobility, you know, all that gets improved dramatically with the get-up. So I put the get-up in there as well. Now, moving on to the uh, press. How many things are cooler than hoisting a heavy weight above your head? And the press is, is pretty measurable as well. Because people can, you know, say, hey, look, I was doing a 16, now I'm doing an 18. Or, uh, you know, and some people are, are pushing up the beast. And then again, the, the press also has a, quite a bit of um, versatility with the bottom subversions and waiter's press and, and uh, things of that nature. So people really like doing the, the press as well. Again, it's something that, that you can measure, that you can see. And again, bull putting heavy stuff over your head. Uh, next one would be the push-up. Push-up would definitely be one of my top exercises. I love doing push-ups. You can do so much with them, such a variety of push-ups. And if you have two arms that work, you can do push-ups. You know, it don't have to be, you know, clapping in front and behind your back, but you can do a wall push-up. So I use push-ups, actually, when I have a, a client that comes in and they've had some shoulder issues or they're coming back from, from surgery, they finish their their uh, physical therapy, and then they start working with me. We start working on push-ups. Um, they stabilize the joint, access the core. You can do a push-up anywhere. If you have a four, you can do a push-up. So push-ups are an excellent exercise, and um, people love being able to do them. It's, it, again, another thing that's very measurable. You know, maybe before they couldn't get all the way down to push-up. Now they're getting all the way down. Now they're doing 10 push-ups, 20, 30, 50, whatever it is, trying different types of push-ups. There's 
more variety of push-ups than I think any other exercise. I mean, I, I currently practice probably about 40 or so different push-up types. I'd say rounding it out with uh, number five would be the pull-up. A pull-up is a great barometer of strength. Uh, you know, I've had people come in to me, gosh, I just want to be able to do one pull-up. You know, and they keep working and working and working, and heck, before you know it, well, yeah, I got my one. I want to go for five, and so forth and so on. And then when they're, they're getting heavier with those, hey, let's go. Let's, uh, let's put some weight on our feet and put a couple kettlebells on our feet and do some pull-ups there. Pull-up, is a, like I said before, is a great barometer for overall strength. I mean, you know, it's, it's engaging everything. You're, you know, your whole body is completely involved in the pull-up. It's, it's an overall exercise and should be in everyone's regimen at some, some form or another. And it doesn't have to be an overhead. You could just do your, your plank pull-ups. You could do them on rings. Decent variety of pull-ups, you know, nothing like the push-up, but it's, it's a great overall strength builder. So private lessons or group classes, what's working for you and why? Yes, <laughs> they're both working for me. You know, the, the thing is with the, the private lessons, let's just start with there. You know, some people like one-on-one. Some people have funky schedules. I, you know, I have surgeons that come in to see me. You know, they have these weird schedules and wacky hours. They're, sometimes they're, they're on their feet for, you know, 18, 20 hours at a clip. You know, regular class doesn't always work for them. So what they do is they schedule privates with me, and you know, I fit them in at the weird, you know, odd times. And then some people, some people just want to build their confidence. You know, before they go, before they migrate into your regular class setting, and they they, they want to know what they're doing. Privates and one on ones work for them. Uh, and then there's other people that just want that one on one with you. They don't want to be in a group. They're not comfortable, or they just they just don't want to do it. So they want to have that that one on one relationship with you, and uh, that works best for them. So you know, we can accommodate them. On the downside of that, not everyone can afford my prices per hour. For that, then, you know, we do have the group classes. They both have their plus and minuses. The thing I like about the group classes is, you know, you have the energy. You know, and then you get a little conversation going with people in the class, and they start pushing each other. You know, it's a lot of fun. You know, again, I can't say which one I like more. I like both. They're both working for me. You know, the only thing is that on, on the downside of a private, if I'm not here and they don't want one of my other instructors, you know, then, you know, we're not making money at it, but uh, with the group class, I can always have you know one of my people teach. Even though I do conduct most of the class at my studio, I still have some good instructors that, that do have their own classes and do fill in as well. So they're both working for me, and I like both. Now, last question. You have a book coming out soon with Dragon Door called Ferocious Fitness. That sounds intense. What's it about, and who is it for? Yes, it is intense. In my mind, it's for everyone because I think everyone should know something about fighting, but that's just me. Um, it's, uh, it's geared toward martial artists, combat fighters, or people who just want to train like one, you know, which, again, in my mind, is, is everyone. Is, you know, most of my classes are geared toward um, strengthening people in the ways of combat movement, you know, with explosive power, with flexibility, durability, uh, mobility, dressing all those different facets that it takes to be a successful fighter. As far as I'm concerned, it's for everyone, and people can really learn from this, but it's really going to help out fighters, martial artists, wrestlers, boxers, you know, to get to that, that next level of strength and conditioning in a very concise manner that is time effective, very, very time efficient. Well, thank you so much, Phil, for giving us some of your time today. Remember, go to the Dragon Door Health and Strength Conference in 2016. That's going to be in August to see Phil Ross's presentation, How to Attract Your Optimal Client Mix and Retain Them Year After Year.